What is up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Guns, Nerds, and Steel. I kept a list of useful things that I learned during my first playthrough of Darkness Falls, and today I'm going to share them with you. No spoilers, just nuggets of information that are not necessarily clear for a player coming from Vanilla Seven Days to Die. The best tip is probably the one that I forgot, so be sure to check the comments and see what others have posted as well. So without further ado, let's begin. Food can be a huge challenge early game. Most food you find in the wild will give a chance of food poisoning. If you contract food poisoning, you'll vomit the contents of your stomach and start losing health fast. Chicken coops, snares, and beehives make for great early game food production items as you work on establishing a farm. At level 5, you can unlock the first two by taking two points into basic farming tips. The beehive unlocks with the third point. They're fairly simple to craft and relatively low maintenance, and you'll have a renewable passive source of honey, eggs, and meat, keeping you well-fed and infection-free. Other easy options for early food include baked apples, grilled yucca, and my personal favorite, boiled meat. Speaking of infection, honey now has a 50% chance to cure an infection, so it may require several to clear up. Sprains are now healed with a splint, and fractures are now healed with a cast. All these supplies and more are inexpensive and sold at the White River Scout, who can be found inside every trader compound. If the hydration meter reaches zero, you'll be unable to regenerate stamina and therefore unable to run, use tools, or melee weapons. Everything has a use in Darkness Falls. Be sure to check recipes, sell price, and scrap materials before you get rid of them. Things like polymer, springs, electrical parts, mechanical parts, glue, cloth, and many other common items can become late game bottlenecks as you are forced to craft more and more to keep up with the difficulty. Make stockpiling a goal and take the time to harvest everything you can along your travels. The garden hoe is not only required to till the soil of your farm, it is also a useful tool for increasing harvest. Craft a scrap iron hoe after taking one point into basic farming tips. The scrap iron hoe can be used for harvesting, but gives no bonus. The iron hoe is unlocked by taking the farmer class, and it will triple your base harvest amount. There are various fertilizer recipes, and fertilizer will allow you to instantly mature a growing crop when applied. There are many ways to arrange a beginner farm, but the important thing to know is that a crop can pull water from four blocks away. Crops cannot be placed on hoed ground adjacent to each other. There must be a one block space in between crop lines. Knowing this, the ideal layout is as you see here. Crop lane, empty lane, crop lane, water lane, and then repeat. The water lane should be one block deep, with every third block dug one deeper for a rain catcher. Scarecrows will keep a 16 by 16 area loaded, so that even when you travel away from your farm, there shouldn't be any trouble with growth. Iron darts can be placed into junk turrets, and they do about four times more damage than traditional junk turret ammunition. These two junk turrets are identical, but you can see that the one loaded with turret ammo does 21.8 damage per shot, and the one with darts does 83.2 damage per shot. The mechanics class offers the Robotics Inventor, which will eventually allow you to have three concurrent robots at one time. Having three robotic turrets is widely considered to be overwhelmingly powerful and is highly recommended for the early game. Certain zombies have health regeneration, and nurse zombies have an aura effect that heals nearby zombies. Feral and regular zombies have no base health regeneration. Radiated zombies will regenerate a certain amount of health after taking damage. This is countered with a rad remover. Tough zombies, also known as legendary or boss zombies, have health regeneration which cannot be countered. Demons have extremely fast and unlimited health regeneration. This can be disabled by applying a laser battery to your weapon, using a laser gun, a laser or plasma melee weapon, or by using one of the various named legendary weapons. One successful hit will disable regeneration for 10 seconds. You can also do double damage to demons by applying a Blessed Metal mod to your weapon. Coil guns are effective due to their high damage per second, but will not disable any type of health regeneration. The Trader Reputation System is a mechanic that can give you access to the Class Mastery Books. Mastery Books can also be crafted or even found in airdrops. But when you have 30 reputation, the traders sell specific books for 100,000 dukes. Each trader quest, regardless of tier, grants plus one reputation. Additionally, every five scout missions grant plus one reputation to all other traders, up to a max of plus ten. 
Wellness is a function of your nutrition versus the beating that you've been taking. You start the game with 100 wellness out of a maximum 200. Maxing out Health Nut allows you to increase wellness to 300. Each point of wellness adds plus one to your max health and stamina. You will lose wellness by becoming infected, suffering critical injuries, and you will lose 20 wellness by dying. Always aim to max or recover your wellness with cooked foods, prepared drinks, beer, and vitamins. The order in which you consume them does matter. Always start with the highest wellness food and work your way down from there. There are four forges in Darkness Falls. The standard forge is only viable in the beginning, with high heat generation and fuel consumption and long crafting times. The big forge unlocks steel and dramatically reduces crafting time, but still consumes fuel and generates heat. The advanced forge unlocks titanium and allows for the fastest crafting with no fuel consumption or heat generation. The Fusion Forge, built via the Laser Workbench, has the same crafting benefits of the Advanced Forge, but unlocks processing of radioactive elements needed for laser technology. Smelting is removed, and ingredients will be removed directly from the inventory. There are various perks that decrease crafting time, most notably is Quicker Crafting, allowing up to a 30% reduction, and the Nerdy Glasses can reduce a further 5% as well. We're all used to calling in screamers, but screamers can be particularly deadly in Darkness Falls. It's not just feral zombies or even rads that you'll have to contend with. Screamers have a chance to call in much deadlier opponents such as Night Stalkers, Zombie Bears, Demolishers, Monsters, and of course, more screamers. Junction boxes help you clean up the appearance of your base. A junction box can have one line in and up to nine lines out. Anything connected to or from a junction box will have no wires. So to hide all of your wires, use junction boxes instead of relays, and also have a dedicated junction box for every switch to be plugged into. In order to set up an elevator, put an elevator control floor at the bottom of your elevator shaft. You can then put an elevator floor at each stop along the shaft. If you only have two floors, just press E to use. If you have multiple stops, simply aim at the elevator and press the desired floor number on your number pad and hit E to go to that floor. Biomes have specific resources that can be found within them. There is a description of this in the journal, but resources are no longer marked with a unique block on the surface. However, they do have a stone, and by hitting that stone, you can see what resources lay below. Stones that give multiple resource types are simple stone, with no resources below. You can still check the map for a colored pixel, which will also tell you what resource can be found there. Darkness Falls presents a variety of ways to obtain select skill points and unlock recipes. Some are available as schematics or skill books, and others can be flat purchased from the traders. It's good to know what points you can unlock instantly by finding the appropriate trader and having the appropriate level of reputation needed to unlock that perk or recipe. Many new foods are available, and several have interesting new bonuses. Perhaps the biggest change is that buffs from candy are now locked behind cooked meals, which are only available by having the Farmer Class Mastery or by finding those in high-end loot. Clay bowls can be crafted in a forge using clay. They can be used to make murky water and then boiled water or to turn canned food into a safe-to-eat meal. Interestingly, they can also be used to harvest tree sap. Tree sap is an ingredient but can also be consumed safely for hydration. Wheels can be found all over the map, both on the ground and often in garages too. Using a harvest tool, you have a chance to obtain a functional wheel. When salvage operations is maxed out, you could even turn one dilapidated tire into two fully functional wheels. Imagine that. Darkness Falls allows you to climb through a one meter high space, but zombies cannot. So this can allow for some creative escapes. But interestingly, if you're digging underground, you can dig a one meter high tunnel and sneak down. Once inside, your head clips through the ceiling and you can use this exploit to either look down for buried chests or observe what's going on at the surface. The UI clock is removed in Darkness Falls. You can tell time at a working vending machine or by purchasing a player vending machine for your base. You can also craft a watch, which is a glove armor mod, but only if you have the survivalist class. Otherwise, you can judge by the position of the sun in the sky or by ambient sounds. Cicadas will begin singing at exactly 1200 hours. And crickets will begin to chirp at 1900 hours.
If it's Horde Knight, your vehicle will be rendered useless at exactly 1800 hours. Black dye is essential for progression. You can find it in clothing or you can craft it using various recipes. Black dye is needed to make ink and ink is needed to make various books, most notably the class books, mastery books, and the future is now. Black skill notes are also very important for the same reason as black dye. You need them to create new class books and mastery books. If you find books or schematics that you've already read or have no intention of using, you should just scrap them into the notes instead of selling them. The Future Is Now is a book that you can craft using 10 research notes. It unlocks one level in technology crafting per book. This perk tree gives you more bonuses to keep up with the rising difficulty, including unlocking the creation of shots, which require predominantly either nanites or demonic essence. You can take a total of five shots each to unlock further boosts, but you have to choose between biological and technological. Once you commit to one tree, there's no going back. Generic schematics are needed to craft mods. All mods take a variable number of notes depending on the mod tier. They are relatively uncommon in loot, but can be found as quest rewards, and they can always be purchased in bulk and relatively inexpensively from the traders. The Wasteland is now uninhabitable without advanced gear. You'll need a full five-piece radiation suit, but the drawback here is that you will have no helmet mods and you'll lose a few pieces of armor as well. You can alternatively create radiation ready armor mods of which you'll need all five. These are expensive and are locked behind the scientist class mastery. In the late game, you'll get access to power armor, which also gives you 20% radiation resistance per piece, meaning you will still need a full suit or a combination of other pieces to get the full 100% needed to survive. Finally, there are also radiation pills. They give 15 minutes of protection at a time and are stackable, and they're easy to make, requiring only nitrate powder and murky water. However, they are also locked behind the master scientist. As you progress in the Darkness Falls storyline, you'll eventually be sent to E. Eve will eventually give you a quest called The Reward. I won't give anything away, but I'll save you an extra trip because you'll want to bring at least two green keycards to this quest and just get ready for a fight. You can improve the utility of your armor by applying Radiation Ready and Ablative Armor mods. They're expensive to make, but give Radiation and Fire Resistance respectively. Power Armor already comes with these bonuses, so you cannot modify them with the said mods. If you're looking to save brass, you can craft a Brass Catcher mod, which has a 50% chance to return a brass casing, and also works on weapons using steel casings. Coil guns and laser weapons can similarly benefit from the Rechargeable Battery mod, which gives a 50% chance to return the coil battery or energy cell, respectively. The military tablet is unlocked with the Scientist Class Mastery. It's easy to craft and has some pretty cool features. The first view is a satellite image of your surroundings, useful for seeing how many zombies are in the area. The second view is ground penetrating radar, useful for spotting buried supplies or treasure. The oil pump is a useful item which unlocks with the Mechanic Class Mastery. It allows you to convert wood, fuel logs, or coal into oil shale to then be further refined into oil or gasoline. If you need a bit more firepower back at your base, you can use this trick to steal Mark II turrets at the trader's compound. Craft and place down a land claim block as close to the wall as you can. Whatever turrets are overlapped by the claim border can then be stolen. Blood bags are important for making first aid kits and paramedic kits. You can use a blood draw kit to create them yourself. When using it, make sure your hunger meter is full. Drawing blood will reduce your hunger, health, and thirst, but will not affect your wellness. If your hunger drops below 75, you'll become anemic. Below 55, you'll become severely anemic. Below 35, and you'll get chronic anemia. And below 15, you will die. Otherwise, if you keep yourself well fed, you can just draw blood forever. Ammo can be opened. If you have unwanted ammo types, start breaking them down into their components to be recrafted into your desired caliber. There are many steps to unlock the backpack. The things to focus on first are crafting a medium backpack as soon as possible. Then finding or crafting three clothing pocket mods, armor pocket mods are no more. You can craft or find various types of tactical rigging as well, which give a variable amount of backpack slots each. You'll then have to max out Pack Mule, and once you get the Survivalist Class Mastery Book, you'll have access to the large backpack, which will then fully open up your backpack, making encumbrance a thing of the past. 
That's all I have for you today. Remember to leave a comment if I missed anything. And if you found any of this helpful, please leave a like to help others discover this video as well. And here's my pitch to you. Hit the subscribe button and become a nerd of steel. And I'll continue delivering tips and tricks, deep dives, let's plays, live streams, game news, and more. Darkness Falls is a pretty hardcore mod, but I highly recommend it if you've never played it before. It's refined, complex, challenging, and fun. And a huge thank you goes out to Kane for creating it. While you're waiting for the next episode, check out some of the content on the end screen here, but if you just can't wait to see what happens next, jump on my Patreon and see if early access is right for you. Huge thank you to those of you who continue to support the growth and development of this channel. You all are the true nerds of steel. My name is Temreki, and I hope this episode has earned your subscription and that I'll see you in the next one, but until then, I wish you all the very best. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.